What should we do if a patient is at risk of delirium or has delirium? Do a urine dipstick? Do some blood tests? Mm, that's only a small part of the answer. There are lots of things we need to do to prevent and manage delirium. A useful mnemonic is pinch me. So P stands for pain. Pain is commonly unrecognised in people with dementia or delirium because they don't sometimes tell us that they have pain. You might recognise that someone has pain if they're wincing or groaning or looking uncomfortable. It's particularly useful to think about pain when people have come in with a condition that's painful. So I often see people who've got, for example, broken bones not being given regular analgesia. Eyes for infection. So infection definitely is a cause of delirium. Um, and you should do a history and examination and blood tests to look for infection. But if there's no signs of infection, don't worry. There's lots of other things that we can do for people with delirium. N stands for nutrition. So it's really important that people get enough energy to feed their brain. If you or I don't eat or drink, then we feel tired and grumpy. And if people are ill with delirium, they need nutrition to uh, provide enough fuel for their brain. So support them with their nutrition. C's for constipation. And anybody who's worked on a geriatric ward will know that geriatricians are obsessed with bowels and being constipated definitely increases your risk of delirium. So try and make sure that people get their bowels moving regularly. C also stands for catheter, and this is a double-edged sword. So um, unnecessary catheters can cause delirium. It can be quite irritating to have a, a, a catheter in. But sometimes a catheter is a treatment for delirium when people have painful urinary retention. So if they've got large volume retention that's clearly causing them symptoms, then sometimes we do need to put a catheter in uh, to, to manage delirium. H is for hydration. So again, making sure people uh, are drinking enough fluids or if necessary, um, getting subcutaneous or intravenous fluids. M is for medications. Um, so these are things that doctors or pharmacists might have a look at, looking at particularly like anticholinergic drugs that can increase your risk of delirium. And E is for environment. So um, involving families and caregivers uh, in, in what's going on and, and reorientating patients, uh, making sure the patients are getting enough, enough sleep, that they've got a quiet environment, that we're not doing unnecessary interventions to, to people at night, uh, and providing leaflets to, to families and caregivers so that they know that their role in, in, in managing delirium. So yeah, bloods and looking for UTIs are, are part of managing delirium. But the bulk of it is these other things, making sure people aren't in pain, making sure they're opening their bowels, making sure they're eating and drinking, they're not in retention um, and that we're reorientating them. Uh, these are the best things that we can do for people who um, either have a delirium or those people who don't yet have a delirium and are at risk of delirium. If, if you want to learn about delirium and other aspects of frailty, then check out our course at www.leadsfrailtyeducation.co.uk. We run a two-day course with 12 RCP CPT points that's got excellent feedback from previous attendees. The website includes details of who the course might be suitable for, learning objectives that are covered on the course, and dates of upcoming courses. We hope to see you soon.